This is a job I've been on with recently, repairing a Stuart model's beam engine. When I got this engine in for repair, it sounded like a jackhammer, a pneumatic drill. On every rotation of the crankshaft there was a pronounced knock. And strangely enough, when I watch beam engines on YouTube, a lot of the ones I see, that look very well made, have this pronounced knocking sound, and they're not meant to do this. The solution is quite simple. This is what I found. When I looked at the crankshaft, I did notice there was something wrong with the crank web. If you look at the video currently running, you'll see that it's been sleeved. The original builder bored out the crank web to the same diameter as the crankshaft, and then realising the mistake, he sleeved the crank web so it fitted on the recessed part of the crankshaft. And once he'd done this, he cross-drilled the crank web all the way through the crankshaft and fitted a pin. I'll just wipe the oil off there so you can see it clearly. What was happening was the crank web was loose on the crankshaft very slightly, not too much, not that you'd actually notice it. But when I held the engine rigid, I saw what the problem was. Removing the crankshaft from the engine, that took a while, taking all the bolts off for the bearings, the eccentric, the flywheel and the end pulley. But when I got the crankshaft in my hand, it was a very simple job. Knock out the pin, remove the crank web, degrease the crank web and the crankshaft, and using some Loctite 603, refit the crank web to the crankshaft, use a taper reamer and fit a taper pin. I then reassembled the engine, and very confident I ran it on air, but it still made a horrible knocking noise. A different kind of knocking noise from before. I had a look at the small end, this was worn, so I made a new pin for that. Then I had a look at the cylinder end of the engine. There was something wrong here also. I disconnected the parallel motion assembly and removed the piston from the cylinder. First of all removing the cylinder cover. I found that the piston on the upstroke was coming right up to the cylinder cover and also at the end of the piston the fitting that connects to the parallel motion was loose on the piston rod. So I tapped a 4BA nut, 2BA, fitted this onto the threads at the top of the piston and refitted the top fitting for the parallel motion. This time the engine ran a lot better, less knocking and altogether smoother. At this point I set the timing to the correct setting, admitting steam, or in this case compressed air, just before top dead centre and the engine started to run a lot better. The next thing I wanted to look at is the universal culprit for engines being noisy and that is crankshaft misalignment. On this type of engine where you have a bed plate and a pedestal that supports the other end of the crankshaft it's essential that everything is in line. This beam engine is mounted on a piece of wood. A better way of doing it is to mount it on a steel plate before you mount it on the wood. I think that's what I'm also going to do with this engine fit a steel plate underneath it to keep everything in alignment. If the main two components, the bed plate and the pedestal, are just mounted to wood, which is quite soft, as you tighten the bolts that hold down the bed plate and the pedestal, the pedestal can actually move as it sinks into the grain of the wood and that knocks the crankshaft out of alignment. I cannot stress how important it is to have the crankshaft at a perfect 90 degrees to the piston rod. Any deviation from this and you will get a knocking sound. This engine exhausts into a condenser oil trap and I removed the outlet pipe for the video so you could hear the exhaust. In this last clip I refitted the outlet pipe and you can really hear how quiet the engine is. Thanks for watching and I hope this has been useful to you.